What was it about the Chicago, Milwaukee area that made it such a hot spot in the 80s for both the skinhead and the racist skinhead movement? Right. Well, I, I, as anybody who's been to both these cities knows, like Milwaukee is just a scale model of Chicago. <laughs> it's like the, pretty much the exact same city, just a third the size. I think it's the segregation in both cities, of, of which both cities are legendary for. Milwaukee has the humiliating dishonor of being the most segregated city in the United States for many years running. And um, it's it's only slightly behind, uh, or excuse me, Chicago's only slightly behind Milwaukee as far as like the level of uh, segregation goes. And that segregation causes horrific implications in the inner cities of Milwaukee and Chicago. Recently, in, in, the, in recent years, speaking of humiliating dishonors, Milwaukee has been named the worst place in the United States to be a black person. Hmm. What is that based on? Is that based on deaths of, the, of or just crime against black people? It's based on like all sorts of standard of living metrics. So teen pregnancy is worse in Milwaukee for black people than it is anywhere else in the United States. Failure to graduate high school, failure to go to college, economic mobility, incarceration, homicide, like all of these metrics all fall into place. And, and of course they're all interdependent and they drive each other. If people aren't graduating high school, they're gonna be more likely to be out in the streets, getting in trouble, so going to prison, getting killed, like all these things are linked together. And I know that was a huge factor in our white nationalist ideology because if you can't point at a, a ghetto and say, look, that's who our enemy is. That's what the threat is. And, and, and very regularly when I was recruiting Joe pissed off white kid, I'd be like, you ever been down to 27th and North Avenue? Like I, I'd name an intersection in the middle of the hood. And uh, first of all, white people in Milwaukee are still terrified to go to those neighborhoods. But uh, either way, I'm like, you ever been down there? No, no, I, I don't go down there. Well, you're wise to, but you know what? If we don't band together and fight for our race, the whole world's gonna look like that. Your your nice white neighborhood is gonna look like that. And, and again, the violent extremist ideologies always have the little shreds of truth that they're based on. And the shred of truth we leaned on heavily was the north side of Milwaukee used to be not just a nice neighborhood, but like a very wealthy one. Um, Sherman Boulevard, which is like the, the biggest uh, strip through the north side of Milwaukee, is lined with all these beautiful mansions from like the heyday of beer brewing and things like that. And we would say, well, it used to be a white neighborhood. Now look at it. And that's what's going to happen to your neighborhood if you don't do something about it. If, if we wouldn't have had the north side of Milwaukee to point at and, and make those accusations, which which are all like historically ridiculous, uh, you have to have a very like willful historical myopia to blame the conditions of the inner city on the people who live there when actually they were created by government policies of redlining saying black people can't live in the suburbs. Right. No one's going to borrow you money for a house. And, and, and it got to a point where like white people were like, we're not living in the city and they all moved out. So these conditions were caused by willful government systemic racism. That's the fact. But of course, as skinheads, were, no, it, it was caused by the people who lived there. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.